What's up, people? It's your boy Jay Smiles, as you may know, one fourth member of Hood Gang. Just here, Street Scholar. Got to talk about a couple topics, maybe some things you guys can relate to, some things you can't. But once you understand what we're talking about, you will surely relate to it. All right, so let's get this started right now. Started rapping at Cleveland Street Elementary School in Orange, New Jersey. Everybody else that I was in class with, they were doing it. Basically, I wanted to fit in, so I started fitting in. I started writing my own lyrics, so I was listening to hip hop more because I was usually like a, a rock and roll guy. When I moved to Belleville, to Belleville, New Jersey, that's how I met up with um, T Mac in the cafeteria. So one day, I was like, all right, cool. Scholar wanted to meet me, so Mac was, you know, Mac introduced me to him. He was like, hey, I know this kid smiles. I go to school with him. I heard some of his shit, it's pretty good, it's pretty tight. So Scott was like, alright, let me check him out. So I met Scott for the first time. That was probably like my sophomore year of high school. Walked to his house and he heard me spit some shit. And there was a problem with me at the time. I didn't really know how to really write a beat that well. You know, I was still in the process of learning. So Scott was telling me, you know, he was trying to make me correct my problems. And then when I started correcting my problems, that's when it became, he started seeing something in me and I started getting better. And we made the first hook game mixtape, you know, in his room. The first hook game mixtape we made in his room, and that's when it just started getting more serious from there. You know, from the first hook game mixtape, I met Chris, Chris the VP. You all know him as Chris the VP. I met Chris from there, and along that way, everything became history. We did our second mixtape, our first official mixtape by DJ Green Lantern and Team Invasion, and from there, we came out with the next hook game mixtape by um, DJ Vlad. We came out with that, and from there on, we just kept making mixtapes like right now we're making more mixtapes for, um, for the internet as you can see we got the infiltration volume one you know right now that one's done and it's out so we're about to make Inf infiltration volume two and in the process i'm coming out with my first mixtape everyone <laughs> i can't i can't really say tupac was the only one that influenced me because i would be lying i would just say everyone influenced me i liked a lot of people growing up i like tupac i like biggie i like mace i like big l i like big pun you know, I even like Cannabis and some of his records that he had. Everybody, I mean, the whole hip hop as a whole influenced me, you know? And, you know, also people that influenced me as well as the niggas in my group, you know? Like, without them, you know, it's not really a drive there, you know? The motivation's not there, you know? I get motivation from the three guys in my group, so... Other than that, I would just say all of hip hop influenced me. March 2nd, 1988, at Jersey City Medical Hospital in Jersey City, New Jersey. Um... My parents died before my father died at, when I was at the age of three. He died from cancer. And my mother died, she had an illness at the age of four. So my sister, Marie, was the one that raised me since I was four years old till now. So basically I was an orphan before I was even five. You know, but she took me in and she raised me. And I moved around a lot. I can't really say there was really one specific town where I did all, all of my growing up in, because I moved around a lot. Um, after Jersey City, I moved over to North, the Ivy Hill section of North. They ain't stayed there for long. Then I moved to Irvington. I was in Irvington for about three years. Um, after Irvington, I went to East Orange for about two years. And then I, I went to Orange for about six years. Went back to East Orange for about a year. I lived in Bloomfield and I came to Belleville. So basically, I've been all around. <laughs> you know, I lived everywhere. And growing up, there was really nothing that I could really do. You know, it was just like the normal kid's life running around, getting scabs, fucking banging your head into the doors and shit, having open splinter wounds, you know, playing basketball, riding bikes, playing baseball. My relationship with females, basically I really got into females at the age of 15, honestly. I'm not gonna lie to you and say I fucking got interested in females ever since I was born, you know? At the age of 15 and basically I never really had like a, a steady girlfriend. It was just like, you know, you're kicking it to people, you know? Kicking it to people, shit will end in like a month, you know. There were whores there, there was whores here, and there were some good girls there, but stupid good girls, you know. And basically, I'm a nice guy. I'm gonna keep it real with you, I'm a nice guy. But I'm a nice guy to a limit. You know, I do admit like a couple of my past experiences, you know, Scott knows about a couple of them. I did get fucked over, I admit that. You know, I got fucked over a couple times and I didn't learn, you know, but when I did learn, it's just like, you know, you find one person that actually shows signs that they're not fucking you over and it goes on for a long time, so you just run with it. I don't trust people like that. I really don't. Even when I'm in a relationship, I'll trust them maybe like a good 80% because you never know anything could happen. 
You know, you may love the person, you may like, yo, you trust them, but anything can fucking happen. People are human. <laughs> you know, anything can happen. So you always gotta stay on your toes. So when it does happen, you can always look back like, damn, at least I was on my toes and you, you don't get hurt that much, you know? But if you put your trust full into somebody and if something does happen, God forbid, then you're fucked. So my relationship with women is basically, right, as I got older, it got a little better, but you never know what could happen, honestly. Well, my first, I would say official girlfriend for the first two months, <laughs> you know, was real bad. This chick was bad. Like when I say bad to the point that she would get mad because I would say something about another girl and she would go fuck another nigga. And she would tell me afterwards, like, I got mad yesterday, so I fucked my ex. <laughs> and I would look at her like, you serious? You fucked your ex? Cause you got you got mad at me and you went and fucked your ex. Like, you, are you serious? All I said hi was all I did was say hi to the chick and you go and fuck your ex all because you were mad. So from then I realized this chick was a whore. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna use her to my advantage. And that's what I did. And she did fucking get in my head a couple of times. Cause I was young, and I was young, and you know I was the kind of guy that I had low self-esteem. When any chick shows interest in me, I kind of get you know I get kind of like happy, like oh shit, oh shit, this chick likes me, you know. So I get kind of into it. And I got fucked over, but as I got older, I was just like, you know what? It ain't even worth it. So honestly, that was like my worst relationship. A lot of lies and deception. And good thing I strapped up, because this girl was fucking bad. You know, like real bad. So that's how I, I would say that was my worst relationship. Money. All right, I'm gonna keep it real with you. I'm not gonna front. I ain't got money like that, <laughs> you know? And at the same time, money's not everything to me because I, my family growing up, we've been through a lot of hardships when we didn't have money. So to the point that I struggle with them like that, I always lean on like, yo, money's not everything. Cause at the end of the day, what you got money for? You got money for not even to save it anymore, but you got money just to spend it, <laughs> you know? So money's not really a big issue with me. It's not like really like my main concern, honestly, because like they said, money's the root of all evil and I'm not gonna be that kind of person that gets fucking trapped into that, like money is everything. Cause once money is everything, that's all you know, that's how life fucks up, man. So I would just say money right now is not really all that to me. I mean, I have money, but I'm not broke. I just don't have money like that. All right, when it comes to like rap battles, like, you know, battle MCs, I can honestly say that's not my forte. You know, there's people out there, like MCs out there that, that's what they're best at, that's why they're so damn good at it. But at the end of the day, that's all they really know. So that's why they can never make it in the industry when it came to like making records and selling, you know. All they, all they have respect for in the streets is just battling. And like, honestly, I could always say that I battled one person in high school. That was probably like two years ago. This one fat kid I battled or whatever. And I won because I had a lot of more shit to say about him. You know, number one, he was fat as fuck, you know, and he just, was just a fat, ugly nigga. He thought he was a shit. So I had more, shit. I had more shit to say about him, and I knew who he was more than he knew me. So I beat him at the um, at the college down from my high school. There was a bomb threat at my high school, so we went to the college to like you know hang out around there, and I battled him there, and I beat him. And from there on, he just like I guess he showed me respect. I guess that's what it was. You know, I didn't really think of it like that. So I honestly said that was my only battle ever. But I, I like as battling overall, I think it's hot. Like I like. I like watching freestyle battles. I like hearing people battle on records. You know, I think it's hot because it it, le it brings like a different kind of swagger to hip hop. You know, it brings like a raw raw edge to it, and, and like a lot. It's hot. You know, it shows people's true emotions and true feelings towards other people in the game. So that's the best way to sell it by battling. You know, and whoever wins wins, and that's it. You get bragging rights. But I think it's hot to win. So you gotta expect the unexpected. That's basically it.